It is my sincere goal that with this eclectic conglomeration of seemingly meaningless parts, I can describe in general overarching detail how a vacuum works. Now, I will say up front, what this video is not is a two-hour talk fest. Oh, I thought about it. I thought about scripting it, but I didn't want to do that because that's just far too long. Could I have done it? Yes, but I want to try to see if I can keep it down as short as possible. I'll make a prediction. Wouldn't it be nice to get it around 10 minutes? <laughs> Who knows how long it's going to turn out. I just started this. So what we have here is a fan. So we're talking about electrically run machines, machines with an electric motor in them. There's lots of ways to pick up dirt, but let's take a look at ones that use a fan. So it all starts out with a fan. So what do you need a fan to do? A fan, even that kind of fan, moves a lot of air. That's right. And by moving the air, it also moves whatever's in the air. If the air is clean, moves clean air. If the air is dirty, it's going to go push a lot of dirty air. But a fan like this, pretty cheap right here, it's a Galaxy, uses very little power. I think on high it's about 100 watts, but you can see it's, it's pretty big. I mean, it's, it, it's huge. So why don't we use this in a portable vacuum? Well, the fan, frankly, is too big, and it doesn't, well... It doesn't generate its airflow in a very controllable manner. It just kind of blows stuff all over the place. Okay, so what do we need to do with that in order to make it more usable? How about that? So this is in many ways the same thing as that. But this has a different case on it. It's a lot smaller. It also spins a lot faster. It's got a different kind of fan. You can see the blades in there. And it uses a lot more power. So if we change from something like this to something like this, now we have something that is a lot more usable, mainly because it's smaller. Incidentally, the airflow that comes out of, or rather goes into this hole, comes out of these holes in the back here and here, it's actually fairly similar to that, but the entire design is completely different. And this generates a huge amount of something that this big open air box fan doesn't. Even though they have similar airflow, you know, lots and lots of CFM, this has essentially almost no suction and you can't, you can't hook a hose up to it. I mean, how would you hook a hose up to that? That's, that's really not going to, that's not going to work very well. So you go say, okay, let's, let's take some of the airflow and get it to go into a hose. That, that's not going to work. But guess what? This one you can. Of course, you're not going to hook it up that way. But that's the same general idea. Now that we have something that's a lot more usable, generates lots of airflow and suction to try to keep the airflow moving. Because let's face it, the airflow is being generated by a hole that's very teeny tiny. You could, like say, in a canister, for example, you could go and hook a hose right up to this thing and you would get yourself some great airflow. Okay, now that, hold on a second, I haven't gotten to everything yet. But you could also take a fan like this and you could hook it up and rather than hook it up to a hose, you could hook it right up into a nozzle. And yep, you could do that. So anybody kind of recognize something like that? Yeah, we call that direct air. Why is that direct air? Because the airflow, literally, and the dirt in the air goes right through the fan. And then it would, you know, go off into other things. Uh, don't worry, haven't gotten to that other step yet. But here is an idea of a direct air type of machine. The fan literally connects right up to this, you know, through a motor. And you get your cleaning power. Now, if you're going to do the canister, obviously you'd do something like this, but there's a problem. There's a problem really with both of these because you don't really want all your dirt to always go through the motor. 
So you need something to kind of interrupt the dirt, something that helps you separate the dirt from the air. Aha! Now we introduce the concept of a bag. Now, in more recent times, that has changed to a bin, but they both accomplish the same thing. So a bag or a bin literally filters, or maybe you could say sifts, the dirt from the air. So if you'd like to see a more practical representation of that, and obviously you have a collar in here and it would, you know, hook up a certain way depending on, you know, what your arrangement is, but you're going to have something's going to generate your cleaning power, your airflow, and then if it's a canister, you're going to have what's known as say bag first. So I'm actually going to place the bag right in front of the motor. And then of course, you know, your hose would be in in this order. So Right here, if I line this up, that's probably about the best I can do with one hand, you have your cleaning power being generated here, you have a bag to actually separate the dirt from the air, and then you have your hose, which, you know, goes off here and people can clean with this or hook it up into a power nozzle or whatever um, accoutrements they like to hook up into it. But that's basically a bag first that is bag in front of the motor design. And even though it looks rather ridiculous, here is a cyclone or bagless system first design. Same principle, but it's now bagless. Many of the original vacuums were bag last, or you could say fan first or dirty fan designs. So you have your nozzle, for example, or it could also be a hose. And then you have a motor, okay, somewhat up there, and then you have a bag. And the bag literally filters the exhaust. Now, not like this. Uh, th this isn't that, <laughs> this isn't a Kirby motor, but this is what I have that I can easily grab. So I don't have a Kirby motor handy. So uh, don't, don't worry about that. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Picky watching this video. Also, way back when, many, many decades in the past, you had, although this isn't, but you could make it that way, you could have a straight suction cleaner. Simply what that meant was you had a nozzle and the nozzle did not have a brush roll in it. So this is not the brush roll that goes in here, by the way. So you could have a machine and it would be portable and you push it back and forth and you could literally use a straight suction nozzle. Now you can use that with the canister as well, but with the invention of a brush roll, something that actually spins, you now have different types of agitation for different flooring types. So for carpet, you really need some type of a brush roll. If you're basically bare floor, you could get away with literally just using straight suction uh, with some little fibrous material, say, around the edges. To sum up, here are some modern representations of different types of vacuums. So here is a Dyson DC-65, and it's a clean air machine because it is bag first, except the bag is a bin, which means it's literally plastic. So over here is an old style type of machine from a technology standpoint. It uses a bag, and the bag is at the back. So it's literally behind the motor. So this is a direct air machine. Next, we have a modern canister, this Mila. And it's still considered a clean air machine because the bag comes before the motor, in front of the motor. And then here's a rainbow that neither uses paper nor plastic. It uses water. Still considered a clean air machine because the filter, which is the water that's in the basin down there, comes before the motor. So, hope this clears a few things up. Have fun with this quickie, generalized video. And thanks for watching.